Hello everyone, my name is Dustin Granwells, and uh, I'm a member of the Turtle Mountain Band of Ojibwe. Uh, I'm a civil engineering student graduating in May uh, with an emphasis in water resources. And I'm here today to shed some light on the Ojibwe people, or also known as the Anishinaabe, or Ojibwe language. And a little bit of contents there, origin. Uh, current status of the language, song and dance, and the future of the language. But first, I would like to share an Ojibwe creation story. Long ago, after the creator of Ichimanyu created man, the Ojibwe strayed from their harmonious ways and began to argue with one another over uh, land and hunt hunting grounds. Seeing this, Kichimanyu, or uh, the creator, decided to purify the earth with water. He did this in the form of a flood. Only then, a Mujo and a few swimming and flying animals were able to survive by taking turns floating on a log. Finally, Nan and Mujo said, I have an idea. I'm going to swim to the bottom and grab a piece of earth. And with the Creator's help, uh, we can create new land. So Nanabuju dove in and he was gone for a long time. Finally, he surfaced and said, the water is too deep. I cannot uh, reach the bottom. So Loon spoke up and said, I can do it. Uh, so Loon dove in and he was gone for a long time. Loon surfaced and he too said, the water is too deep. One by one, the animals tried to reach the bottom, and they all failed. Then Muskrat, or Wajush, in a timid voice, spoke up and said, I can do it, uh, let me try. And then all the bigger animals started to laugh, and uh, laugh at Wajush. And uh, Nanabuju spoke up and said, only Gichimanagu can pass judgment. If Muskrat wants to try, he can. So Muskrat built in and he was gone much longer than the other animals. Nanabuju and the animals all thought he was dead. Finally, Muskrat floated to the top, holding a little piece of earth, and he was dead. All the animals began to shout with joy. He did it! Turtle, or Mikinok, spoke up and said, place the earth on my back, and with the help of Kichimanadu, we will have new earth. So Nanabuju placed the earth on the turtle's back, and the four winds began to blow from all directions and the tiny bit of earth grew and grew until there, were, until there was an island. The island kept growing and the animals began to sing and dance as the island grew larger. Finally, there was a huge island in the middle of the water and that island is known as North America or Turtle Island. Um, so the current status of uh, Ojibwe is uh, that Ojibwe has been called many different things, including Anishinaabe Mowin, which is uh, just another way of saying uh, the Ojibwe language. And Ojibwe, uh, or Ojibwe and Chippewa, ranging from Michigan to Montana, Canada, and centered around uh, the Great Lakes, Ojibwe is a central Algonquin language spoken by the Anishinaabe. Close to 9,000 speak, uh, people speak Ojibwe in the United States, most of which are 70 or older. Uh, Ojibwe is listed as an endangered language according to the UNESCO Atlas of the World's Languages. Uh, and the 70 or older just indicates that it's dying with the older generation. And it has been said that without a language, we will become descendants of Anishinaabe rather than Anishinaabe. This highlights the importance of the Ojibwe language. It is part of the Anishinaabe identity. All Native Americans have been victims of centuries of genocide, biological warfare, assimilation, and racism. The language suffered due to boarding schools, and children were punished if caught speaking their own language. The United States philosophy towards Native Americans was kill the Indian and save the person. But despite this, these horrific facts, we Native Americans have survived and preserved our traditional ways, one of which is through song and dance. And I have a quick YouTube video to display what uh, Pawa 
dolls look like and uh, singing and dancing would look like. And while he's pulling that up, this uh, clip is actually the Gathering of Nations powwow, and it's down in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it's the largest powwow uh, in the United States or in the world, and it's uh, you know tens of thousands of people show up, and from all different tribes across the whole United States, and uh, it's quite a spectacle. Okay, I think we've uh, actually seen the gist of what I wanted you guys to see, and uh, that's, you know, just the dance and, and what they said kind of right before the cutout on us is also important. And uh, just a actual fun fact is that Native Americans are the only ones that are lawfully able to possess uh, eagle feathers and uh, eagles. Um, so, uh, drumming is considered the sacred heartbeat of Mother Earth and is a mixture of melodic vocalizations as well as actual singing of Ojibwe words. It is the spiritual healing of and purification of mind, body, and spirit for the individual and for the people. And it is a, just a celebration of life and thanksgiving to get you out of you.
And uh, revitalization efforts are underway with the immersion of uh, schools operating in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Ojibwe has a growing number of second language speakers, and the language is taught in many secondary and post-secondary classrooms throughout Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Ontario. And although that we are at great risk of losing our language forever, we are hopeful in the revitalization and preservation of our Ojibwe language. And uh, I meant to say a prayer to open uh, my talk, and just so you can hear a little bit of Ojibwe, uh, here is just one prayer that I know. Wabana Kwek Nidishna Kaz, Makla Dode, Mikanak Wajra Lodi Dunjiba. Kichimanaku Mikwesh for allowing me to present today. And uh, what I said was, uh, White Cloud, I am called Bear Clan, and uh, I am from Turtle Mountains. Thank you.